then. Um, sorry for the noise. I'm doing some pre pre journey checks and uh, the tyre's a bit low, so I'm just going to get a quick pump up. Um, getting car loaded, getting ready to go. My brother should be here soon. Um, it'll be turning up, we're going together, um, and then we're picking up um, my mate on the way there, and then we'll be get to the permission. It yeah, should be a fun night, so Halloween, and um, in a creepy place. I'm not going to do uh, well, it's in Ian basically, where we're going. By the time I've uploaded this, I've been gone. Um, it's in Ian, so my mate's land. That, um, that he owns as a farmer and it's um, where the plague stone is basically um, so back in the day you know when black plague were happening they had a, a stone in the middle so a bit like um, medieval or whatever social distancing so when traders when they needed food or whatever traders would come up put the they'd put the um, coins on the stone traders would then come up and then give them the goods take the coin so it's like a you know some social distancing basically <laughs> ironically Anyway, that's where we're going. It should be uh, nice and creepy. And um, my mate got creeped out last time we were there because he heard a fox for the first time doing its, its scream. Because if anyone doesn't know what a fox actually says, it screams like a dying something or other. I don't know, it just screams like it's dying. Anyway, I'll bring you back then. Then, so bring you back to the uh, first stop of the way, picking up his mate who's we're all nice to be there for a time. We're a half an hour late just because of our way we got setting off in traffic and what have you going through Sheffield. Uh, we're just following him and he's just getting out of bed. Bloody useless, I tell you. Anyway, um, should be here soon, hopefully. Otherwise, we're gonna end up leaving without him. Um, and I'll bring you back on when we're back on the road. Hey, so how's the camera? How's it going, look baby? Look at him, look at him, look him fresh. Should we get drinks and water from McCall's? I'm lucky. I'm lucky. On the camera, man. I'm not kicking that. I think this is. <laughs> Cleo could do it. If you pull the handbrake, you're going to get pulled back. <laughs>
Day one of camping, I seem to have been abandoned by my fellow colleagues. I'm walking through the mud and the rain with sheep. And they've all gone. I'll uh, check back in in a few hours, see if I'm still alive. I have no water, no food, and that I'm going to survive. Good sign. Yeah. That stinks up. I'm gonna say that is clutch. It stinks. Oh boy, he's not gonna make it all the way up there. He's about it. <laughs> Are you panicking Russian? Oh, you alright? Oh. Here, grab that and pull it towards him. Man's a fool, sorry. Can't. Oh. Oh. <laughs> some slack on it. There we go. Hey, All right. right. <laughs> Here, you pull them to you pull them together for me. Get your big ass arm out of the way. Hey, I feel like I'm in the Titanic. <laughs> <laughs> Can you help me pull it? Oh shit. One second, one second. It's got plenty of pull, isn't it? Unless. Hey, so that's how far I got up there. No help from these two screws laughing at me. That's so where we're coming down. My mate who owns the land has told me that if you'd known I was going to try and come up here, you need free land and said not to bother because his vehicles had struggled because they're how wet and boggy it is. And that's the drop. 
So I've literally been taking piss out of me. Uh, it's not zooming in, but you see, like just there, God, it just didn't, it stopped, it just won't go any further, and it was going down this, and there's a rate hole drop. So I was, as you can imagine, I was bricking it. But I think the Freelander's done well to get as far as it has done. It's first time I've got a muddy, and I've got a muddy. And a bit shitty, because there's sheep shit everywhere. Yeah, you flick shit all over me, look. <laughs> look at this. Actual shit, mate, there's big turds everywhere. Nice one. Yeah, a bit less off roady. Told him he needs one wheel bearing. He's like, oh yeah, just do all of them. So this is the top of where the tracks got to before I absolutely bottled it and the freelander she couldn't give me any more. To be fair, I think any car, even big discos and all that kind of thing, they struggle with no tires on, it's just very bad. Also didn't want to wreck land too much. Fuck. Right, I'll move Land Road back down there because I was scared of it. Um, sliding down because it was a bit precarious where it were basically I'm not ashamed to say it this is a uh, warning to anyone that's ever fancied going off road and haven't got an idea what you're doing like me don't do it without any experienced people with you I've just done that and basically could have gone badly I was fortunate I took my time took it steady and I was careful what's the worst case scenario could have ended badly it didn't, so that's good. And my wife don't watch these videos, which is also very good because if she saw this one, she'd be very, very upset with me. Sorry, dear. Um, so yeah, just be careful. Don't, you know, take advice, get advice. I've not done any of this, and it scared me enough to. I'm gonna get advice from people that are experienced and do that before. Um, Right, going to attack on this kind of off-roading. If anyone can, who's watching, want to let me know how, you know, bad this is. Like, how experience you need to be, how much of the experience you need to do this, what kind of like level it is, as it were. I'd love to know, because I've got most of it up there. <laughs> Just on, I don't know if it was bravery or stupidity or what, but I've got most of the way up there. But it's immensely boggy. Walking down to the car, I fell. Unsurprisingly, if my wife is watching this, she'll testify to the fact that I'm always falling over. I'm not going to live very long. And yeah, quite unfit. I'm making the long, arduous journey back up the hill. I'll meet you there. to find some dry wood, we're just processing it now. Hopefully, we're able to get a fire. And the wind has not helped us trying to get that set up. That one absolute pain in absolute pain in ass. How you doing Moz? Alright bud. You having fun? Yeah. Alright, we got some wood. Oh. Now we're gonna start a fire. You got, you got some wood? I got morning wood, afternoon wood, yeah, evening wood. wood, all kinds of wood. What well, you fucking say? What about your Van Gogh sign being yeah. on backwards? That means that you put your outer sheet on, inside out, upside down, back to front. How are you feeling? Stupid. <laughs> <laughs> That's stupid. I'd put it right way around, mate. That's probably why it don't look right. Well, it won't take you long. Not like that. Yeah, not taking long. Sean's still trying to figure out the table. No, it's His built. nemesis. It's built. Ooh, perfect. he's late, look. It's perfect, eh? As soon as he helps me do my. I'm going to help you do this. Do you want one just set up camp. Go for a little wander. And here's the plague stone. 
Seth was just taking pictures. The boundary storm presents a story of heartbreak concerning Emmett Siddle and Roland Torrey. Emmett was a young girl of about 22. That was old back in the day. Back in today. Who patrols to Roland Torrey from the scene. Lived in a cottage across Mary Cooper's house where the plague started. Social distance stone. That is a social distance. It is. It's social distance, isn't it? But that back is in there. Exactly what it's for. Yeah. Social distance. He's Don't it say something about here? It says something about trading, doesn't it? Like yeah. I had to trade on it. They'd no, put, no. They put the money on it and then the goods are going in and all. She his wife used to stand there and he used to stand here. As long as there's this distance between them. Oh right, I thought it was for trade, you know. Oh, fair enough. I mean these these little things are. That's why people used to put money and stuff. They go quite deep, look. You can put, <laughs> put your finger in them. Look. It's going everywhere. <laughs> He's just fingering a big rock. He's fingering the rock. The big rock. It's all over my face. <laughs> <laughs> Did the rock just squirt on your face? Yeah. <laughs> Dirty bitch. Damn. <laughs> Fight going, yeah. <laughs> oh. Good evening. I fired it. Where's the fight? Oh. Hang on. You need to cook them. You don't have to. Oh. That's so sad. I'm gonna fucking salute that, buddy. I've it's... got to bleed that out now. <laughs> Stew stick. Fatigue with some beans. Here. Stay for camping food, that. Oh. Ah. Where's the lead? I don't care. Obviously, boys. Henderson's relish. Can't leave it when we at it. This setup looks like what you see in Compton. Oh yeah. It's a proper campfire mate, that's what that's what you want in it. Love it. That's why I like coming to permission like because it's not you got to just other campsites and it is just a campsite, you've got to have a fire pit and everything. This is like more authentic. You've got the uh, Endos. Uh, Sean's got it. Sean's got Endos. Beautiful. I didn't put enough in earlier. Sheffield staple, that. Ooh, uh, a bit of Endos. So, yesterday, spent about an hour putting hammock up, putting tarp up, wind battering me, rain battering me, I couldn't do it, and um, I managed to get Mozzie and Sean set up with their tents. Once we got them set up basically, and they just helped me set up and we could get set up in hammock. Um, then it were horrible. I think I must have set it up wrong. Um, it's like a whole twisted in hammock, and I couldn't get comfy. I could feel like the like it, it ribbed, so it weren't like, you know, proper hammock, if you know what I mean. It weren't just, it weren't right. Like I said, the like ribs that were like pushing me up one side and that, and I felt like I was gonna fall out all the time. So 
by this point, it's midnight. I should have tested it earlier and everything, make sure it was already. It's my own fault. Um, apart from that, when I could get slightly comfy, um, wind, because of wind chill, it was just freezing me. On my back and my backside and everything was just absolutely freezing. Because um, I don't have I don't have them um, under blankets either, so that's obviously the issue with that. So if I'm gonna try and use hammock again, I need to get an under blanket, under blanket, under blanket. Get my words out. Um, and try again. So I ended up walking downhill in the dark, probably through loads of sheep crap, and getting in the car. Like you see back, and I probably had two, maybe three hours sleep at, at most, because um, it's not comfortable. I'm waiting back on seat's horrible, but it was warmer. That's the main thing. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna get out now. Get back up hill. Make a coffee. Get ready to uh, to get some breakfast. We'll go break camp first. And everything. I'll tell you something. I am knackered. Absolutely, truly knackered. Is what it is. Okay, so that's the camping trip concluded. I've got things drying there, so that's my tarp and my hammock drying there. I've got sleeping bags in the washing machine. I'm about to re-edge the axe and give them a clean because I've absolutely battered them um, when we were um, chopping through some wood. A couple of guys missed a few times and hit some stones nearby and stuff like that, so edges have gone a bit. I need to clean my boots, I need to clean my cutlery and stuff like that. You're not going to want to watch that, but I'm just telling you things that people don't normally share on these videos when they're going out camping. They're not sharing the mucky bits, the boring bits and that you have to do. So I'm going to spend the next hour or two just cleaning up and everything, making sure everything's all right, making sure everything's dry before I put it away. That's why everything's on there now, making sure it's dry before I pack it away, and away we go. Um, I didn't film up too much last night because last night we were just enjoying the moment, having a laugh, having a good old natter and stuff like that, and just enjoying being around campfire with a few drinks and some good food and some good company. Um, it doesn't help that my mate who's American, he does swear a lot. And I just couldn't be bothered to bleep everything out, otherwise it'd just be constant bleep, 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 bleep. Um, I'm impressed with the Freelander, I'll show you, I'm obviously showing you footage in the video, I've been impressed with the Freelander and what it's done. Um, my mate who owns the land who gives us permission for it, said he wouldn't have gone up there in his Discovery or his Range Rover and that, you know, built better than a Freelander for doing that. And he said I've done bloody well to get as far as I did, so I didn't, I'd, I had no idea what I'm doing. I still don't know what I'm doing, I've learned a lot rapidly in that little bit. Um, I'm going to definitely go on off-road course and get some, um, you know, some knowledge down me and everything and l learn how to do it um, off-road properly. Um, but that Freelander, they're more capable off-road than people give credit for. Absolutely. It did bloody well. Um, and looking back, it was good fun, but at the same time, it was terrifying. I'm quite close to edges and where this, you know, it's quite a steep hill and stuff, and it was quite close to edges a few places. And I was just like, backside, we're going. Oh well, a little bit more, don't you? I know, I don't know how to do it, you know, to learn a bit and everything before I go do it again. Anyway, that's it. If you like that video, please consider liking, sharing and subscribing. Until next time, thank you very much.